Hello, in this video we derived the maximum likelihood estimator of a double exponential distribution. Here the density is given by this, the two parameter density where B is positive and X and mu are real numbers. And the joint density that if we take a sample of size n would be this and since the each Xi are independent then we just multiply them together so that's why if you take this up we get 2b to the minus n and then you end up summing the uh, exponents of this exponential. The log likelihood to this distribution is first I, I kind of put it over both of those so then when you take the log of a product that's the sum of the logs and then the n can come out front on each of those and here the log and exponents will just cancel next we take the partial derivative of our log likelihood with respect to b so th this is constant goes away here it's minus n over b and here uh, you end up getting a, a minus 1 over b squared so then that makes that a plus and that's a constant so it stays the same we set it equal to 0 then we multiply everything by b squared so this cancels and one of them cancels and we're left with a b so then we subtract the b over the n minus b or minus n b to the other side divide by n and we get this now we don't know what mu is so we need to find the maximum likelihood estimator of mu so we can plug it in here to find the maximum likelihood estimator of b. So this is what we do. So now we take the partial of, of L, the log likelihood with respect to mu. So this is constant, this is constant. The minus uh, 1 over b is constant. And then we take the so derivative is the linear operator, so we can take it in here. And then the derivative of this absolute value ends up being this right here. So that minus 1 ends up because of, you know, you take the derivative and you get this, and the chain rule you get an extra minus 1, and so this is it. And so this is, uh, uh, it's all over the internet if you want to Google how to take the derivative of absolute value. I mean, essentially the trick is you square it and then take the square root and then you take the derivative of that. We set it equal to 0, and then we multiply this to the other side, we multiply that minus 1 to the other side, and we're left with this. Now, whatever mu we put in here, you know, this is always positive, and this is and this could be negative or positive, but we're only going to get minus 1 and 1 out of this, out, uh, for each mu. Now, there is one little caveat, though. When mu is equal to one of the data points it's undefined for that particular term so we leave it out and so um, when mu is not equal to a data point we get n ones and minus ones and when mu is equal to the data point we leave that term out and so we get n minus one ones and minus ones but leaving that term out is, is equal to setting it to zero so this can be in, written in terms of the sine function. So it's the sine of this. And the sine function, actually S-I-N-G is a R command too if you want to use it. But what it does is it takes the argument. If it's positive, it assigns it a 1. If it's 0, it's a 0. If it's negative, it assigns it a negative 1. So this sum ends up being this. Now, how do we... Um, solve this for mu when it's zero. That's what we're going to do on the next page. But before we start, let's let's let this be uh, g of mu. It's a, this is the function that we want to solve for mu, you know, find the root, meaning where it equals zero, which is this piece. But notationally, it's much easier if we write this in terms of order statistics. So these xi are not ordered but when you sum through them, that's the same as if we ordered them from smallest to largest, 
and then sum through them and that's what this order statistic does so um, these are the same but it's easier to to think about it in terms of these order statistics <clears throat> so here's a note before we proceed if n is odd meaning our sample size is odd the median is that middle value which is n plus 1 over 2 and if n is even then the median is actually somewhere between the two middle data points y sub n over 2 and y sub n over 2 plus 1 it's anywhere in there and so this is a linear combination of those two data points uh, where t can be from 0 to 1 now most uh, packages I think just take the average of those two and then that's the median but technically it could be anywhere in there so let's examine g of mu and look at it okay so let's assume n is odd and then g of mu is equal to this and let's explain it so if mu if mu is less than every data point then the oh and I, I should have written that down again so if mu is less than every data point mu is less than every data point this is always positive for each n so we're going to add up n ones and we're going to get n now if mu is equal to that smallest data point so we leave it out and then we sum the rest we're going to get n minus one data or of, as a value if we're between the two smallest points and oh you can think of this as the penultimate point you know penultimate in mathematics means second to last and so for anywhere in between there that this sum is n minus 2 and actually you can keep going and then if it equals that middle value of course then g of mu for that term that it equals that is 0 and the rest are 1's and minus 1's but they all add up to 0 and then as we progress bigger and bigger and bigger then these values start become negative so where is g of mu 0? it's at the median so g of the median is 0 okay but this is when n is odd so we have to look at it for when n is even okay so don't look at this point over here um, and again when n is even and, and mu is less than every data point then we're then we're summing in ones so the value is one and we can actually progress down and when mu is between the two middle values then half of the half of the numbers will be ones and the other half will be negative one so they add to zero and then we can and then as mu gets larger and larger between each data point then it eventually goes to negative n and so where is g of mu zero well anywhere between the middle two values but that's what a median is defined as so g of the median is zero right so in both cases when n is odd or n is even the median of our sample makes that zero okay so that says that our maximum likelihood estimator of mu is the median but then since we know that's the maximum likelihood we can plug it in for our value for b and then that this is the maximum likelihood estimator for b well that's all i have for today hopefully you enjoyed that i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye